Welcome. Uh, on behalf of Ron and myself, I'd like to welcome you all to the second uh, HIV TDP uh, meeting representing the national C cars. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't hear me. Um, we have this meeting was convened by uh, the Division of AIDS, the program officers at the Division of AIDS, and you'll we'll hear from Shuda to hear about progress in the field of HIV TB, specifically catalyzed around the CFARS. And um, we are, have a full meeting of uh, science today, and so we're going to get to it. Um, but first, Ron is going to give a brief introduction to how this working group, this HIV TB working group, was initiated and set the stage for the meeting establishing what we hope are the goals of the meeting and what the outcomes uh, we would like to see, the outcomes we'd like to see from the meeting. So also uh, thanks everybody for participating. For those of you who are uh, speaking and those of you who are uh, participants. Um, and uh, uh, I think that uh, we're going to try and hit a couple of uh, different and complementary goals uh, with the meeting today. So just by way of background, the, the, the um, importance of HIV TB co-infection, you know, has been percolating uh, up to the forefront of the epidemic for, you know, over a decade now. And I think that the CFARS as a group first addressed this through a meeting that was held in Boston in 2005 that was really a, a, an outstanding scientific symposium addressing what the critical challenges were in confronting TB HIV co-infection. That led to a special issue of uh, 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 the Journal of Infectious Diseases. Um, a more uh, uh, working group workshop was held in 2009 as a standalone meeting um, hosted by the Baylor UT CIFAR, uh, UT um, Houston CIFAR. Uh, in 2009 as a workshop that included both CIFAR and non-CIFAR investigators that focused on the critical gaps and needs and tried to identify ways that the CIFARs could work together to address those needs. It led to the creation of a TBHIV website that cataloged uh, uh, CIFAR-supported co-infection studies, projects, and potential resources, and led to several suggestions to NIH program for how the research could be advanced. And the, Three major suggestions were uh, supplements uh, to be awarded to CFARs that could specifically be targeted at co-infection research pilot projects, supplements to support the embedding of basic research questions into uh, clinical studies, clinical trials, and then a third area that was identified as high priority were pilot studies um, in primate models of TB HIV co-infection. Um, the uh, The uh, uh, first one of these suggestions was at least in part contributory to, I think there have been a couple of rounds of TB, HIV uh, supplements given out to the CFARs to enucleate research. <laughs> so we're three years later, we're having the second inter-CFAR TB workshop. We've decided with input from a uh, 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 program to focus this on <coughs> work that's supported by TB developmental pilot grants to have more of a scientific focus and then supplement that at the dinner, uh, o over dinner, <coughs> with a focus on programmatic initiatives. So here's what the goals are for today. Uh, the main area is scientific, to share uh, the ongoing and emerging TB co-infection studies that are supported by CFARS. And, and really, uh, the people who are speaking here are all young and emerging investigators who are supported by pilot studies. And it's to develop a network of investigators within this group. All of these people, all of you, are, are uh, creating the next wave of investigators. And hopefully, working together through the CIFAR network can be greater as a whole than the sum of the parts. Uh, identify opportunities for new collaborations. Um, we've built a bunch of breaks into the schedule. There's going to be a dinner. Hopefully, everybody will have a chance to meet the other investigators, find individuals with like-minded interests. And then also, through seeing what's going on at different CFARs, identify resources that can be shared across CFARs, uh, whether it's collaboratively or through more formal sharing mechanisms. Then there are programmatic interests. One is very important is to highlight uh, for program and for each other uh, 
uh, what CIFAR contributes to emerging co-infection research, to identify what are the new areas for emphasis, uh, to identify barriers uh, for research in this area and potential strategies, and then together with program identifying new mechanisms for CIFAR and the TB AIDS branch uh, programs to work together to foster this area. I put this up because you can't see it, because this is a <laughs> listing of all of the current ongoing TB <coughs> HIV co-infection studies. The top are those that are supported through uh, developmental core pilot grants, and these are the uh, current year's uh, supplement, HIV TB supplement studies. So there's, a, there's really a lot going on within the, within the CIFAR network. These are all pilot projects that will hopefully uh, move to uh, uh, fruition and uh, funding with larger projects. So this really is a uh, tremendous uh, group of people. So we're going to have 16 short scientific presentations, uh, 10 minutes, and then we have um, is it five minutes for discussion and questions, we have 10 plus five. And um, because it's a tight schedule, we're going to really, we're going to really stick to that. Um, and uh, you'll be cut off at 10 minutes. I, I, I'm sorry for that, but you will be. Uh, as I said, they're all uh, developmental core and supplement projects. Um, we're going to discuss uh, NIH funding initiatives and opportunities. So Sudha Srinivasan is here from uh, 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 the TB uh, pathogenesis branch, um, who will tell us what is being developed in the pipeline, uh, something we're all interested in, what are the novel uh, new and um, uh, emerging funding opportunities. Funding is what makes everybody's ears pick up. And then together we'll be developing suggestions for program in scientific areas for emphasis, sharing of resources to further research, and other ideas to further progress. So we have about 40 people registered. Um, that includes developmental and supplemental awardees. We have um, uh, uh, a number of uh, outstanding uh, senior HIV uh, TB investigators. Uh, to, to name a couple, we have Dick Chasen and Bill Jacobs and, and others here who will help inform our discussion and uh, 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 both the science and the programmatic aspects. And then um, uh, Suda, uh, could you raise your hand? Suda Srinivasan from the TB Clinical Research Branch. Uh, Peter Kim, is Peter here? Peter, uh, also. Uh, uh, Ann Nam Kung Lee is going to be coming in and out, as is Candace Bobbin from uh, CIFAR program, and is Stacy Carrington, Stacy Carrington Lawrence uh, from the Office of AIDS Research uh, are here. So for all of you young investigators, use this as an opportunity to know your program officers, get to know them, talk to them. They're here to hear what you're doing, and so uh, that's key to what uh, uh, our goals are. So. I think I will turn it over to uh, Sarah at this point. So the fi my final uh, introductory job, actually, does this move forward? Here. All right. No. Oh, wait. Ah, yeah. Sorry, so we forgot this. I forgot this. So there is a website. <laughs> and the website uh, is, um, uh, includes our, recently con our, our previously conceived of working groups. It has a listing and a cataloging of uh, uh, co-infection research ongoing at all of the CIFARs, a list of members with contact information. It has a number of educational and technical resources, um, a report from the uh, 2009 uh, meeting, and this will be updated with a report from this meeting, um, and uh, 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 recommendations that come out of, of this meeting. So. Um, this will be a uh, ongoing, uh, revised, updated uh, website that will serve as a nucleus for information sharing for this group. Let's see if that's. Oh ah, no! Gosh, no. Okay. Look at all the things we're saying. <laughs> so, um, I just want to share with you what what I, I shared with you the three specific requests that were made of program in terms of uh, supplements and funding initiatives. There were uh, actually seven areas uh, of emphasis that came out of the 2009 meeting. Um, key challenges or barriers uh, that, if overcome, would enhance this area. And that was transparency and inf information sharing between CFARs. 
to facilitate collaboration. And that was one of the impetuses for creation of the website. Resource sharing among CIFARs, samples, reagents, and technology. Many people in one CIFAR may have samples. People working in other CIFARs uh, may have questions that need access to those samples. So we want this to be a nucleus uh, for that type of sharing. Better access for patient-based samples to be used by lab-based researchers. And a key issue that was identified three years ago was leveraging clinical studies for um, uh, pathogenesis, immunological, and mechanistic studies. There are a lot of treatment uh, clinical studies ongoing. How can they be more effectively leveraged for uh, me mechanistic understanding? In vivo models of co-infection, a critical need, whether it's primate models or small animal models of, of co-infection, perhaps humanized mice. Incentives for investigators to enter the field of integrated HIV TB co-infection research. An area that hopefully we'll be able to discuss a little bit this evening is inter-CFAR South-South collaborations on co-infection. Many CFARs have programs in Sub-Saharan Africa. Certainly many CFARs have programs in other areas of the world. How can we leverage interactions uh, um, among those? And then an area that was identified by some of the people from the more TB-focused communities was that HIV co-infection doesn't have the profile in the TB research community, we all recognize the intersection of these as critical for the HIV epidemic, but the same level of visibility may not be the case within the TB research community. So, you know, carrying the torch of co-infection as a priority into the TB research communities. So these are the seven areas that were highlighted in 2009, points that maybe we can keep in mind as we work through the discussion this evening after we hear about the science. So now let's Ah, oh, yes. Okay. So I get the thanks part of this. Um, so I realized, actually, we started without introducing ourselves. I'm Sarah Fortune. I'm from Harvard University. This is Brian Coleman, who's from the University of Pennsylvania. And uh, obviously, putting together a meeting like this um, requires a great deal of support. And so the people I'd like to thank especially, I'd like to thank Shuda and Peter Kim for uh, providing the impetus for us coming together. I would like to thank Ron especially. Ron has been... Uh, incredibly uh, important in holding together the TBHIV working group since the 2009 meeting. And with that, the University of Pennsylvania CIFAR and the Harvard CIFAR um, and the Harvard in Global Health Institute, who have all provided financial support both for the working group um, over time and for this meeting.